Hello friends, welcome to EC Academy. In this lecture, let us understand the characteristics of practical frequency selective filters. Today, you will understand how real filter behaves, why they are different from ideal filters and what parameters engineers specify when designing the practical filters. First, let us understand an ideal filter. An ideal filter characteristics is shown in this figure. An ideal filter is one that has a perfectly sharp cutoff between the pass band and stop band. And the magnitude response of the filter will be exactly one in pass band. And this magnitude response will be equal to zero in stop band. But in reality, such filters are physically impossible to implement for real time signals. So we cannot realize an ideal filter, but we can approximate the ideal filter with a practical filter. Now let us discuss the key characteristics of practical frequency selective filter. Take a look at this graph on the screen. This graph shows the magnitude characteristics of a physically realizable filter. In x axis, we have the frequency and in y axis, we have the magnitude response of the filter. If you can observe, it is having three regions. First region is pass band, where the signal passes with a little attenuation. Next, we have stop band, where the signal is highly attenuated and we have transition band which is a smooth region between pass band and stop band. If you compare the practical characteristics of a filter with an ideal characteristics, here the magnitude does not drop abruptly from 1 to 0 but it gradually decreases from 1 to 0. So there are three important regions. First region is pass band where the signal passes with little attenuation. We have stop band where the signal is highly attenuated and we have transition band which is a smooth region between pass band and stop band. Now let us understand the ripples in filters. Now if you can observe here in pass band the response is not perfectly flat but it fluctuates as you can observe here. This fluctuation is called as pass band ripples, which is represented by delta 1. Similarly, in stop band, the response is not exactly zero, but it may have small oscillations or fluctuations. This fluctuations is called as stop band ripple that is represented by delta 2. So, delta 2 is stop band ripple. So, in practice, the magnitude of pass band filter will not be exactly 1, but it varies between 1 plus delta 1 and 1 minus delta 1 because there is a fluctuation. And in stop band, the magnitude is less than delta 2. So, this is about the ripples present in the filter. Now let us talk about band edge frequencies. In pass band, the edge frequency is denoted by omega p and in stop band, the edge frequency is denoted by omega s. So the difference between omega p and omega s represents the transition band. So for a low pass filter, the bandwidth will be calculated at the pass band that can be given as 0 minus omega p. So the bandwidth of a low pass filter will be omega p. So in a practical filter, sharper the transition band, the practical filter will be closer to ideal filter. Now to handle the large range of values in filter response, we use logarithmic scale in terms of decibels. So we can represent the ripples in the form of decibels. The ripple in pass band can be given as 20 log to base 10 
delta 1 which will be in terms of decibels and in stop band the ripples can be represented in terms of decibels by using the formula 20 log to base 10 delta 2 that will be in terms of decibels so finally whenever we design a filter practically we must specify the maximum tolerable passband ripple delta 1 the maximum tolerable stop band ripple delta 2 passband edge frequency which is omega p and stop band edge frequency which is omega s so these four parameters fully define the filter design problem so to summarize you need to remember ideal filters are not reliable hence we can approximate the practical filters so you need to remember practical filters have pass band ripple stop band ripple and transition band so we define filters in terms of delta 1 delta 2 omega p and omega s so we understood how real filters behave why they are different from ideal filters hope you have understood this topic thank you